Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to explain how we can switch easily from the continuous S domain to the time discrete Z domain by using approximation methods. Precondition is that your sample frequency is high enough, so let's say 10 to 20 times the maximal signal frequency or the system bandwidth. The approximation methods we're going to discuss are the backwards difference approximation and the Tustin or bilinear transformation. Both methods guarantee that the stable controller in the S domain yields a stable controller in the Z domain. So let's start with the backwards difference approximation. It is based on the following approximation. When we have a function f and we take the derivative of f, we can say it's almost equal to f at a certain sample time minus f at the previous sample time divided by the sample time t. So when we go to the S domain and replace ddt by s, we get that s times f equals f minus the previous f, which is equal to z to the power minus 1 times f divided by t. So we can say that in that case s is equal to 1 minus z to the power minus 1, which is the previous sample over here, divided by the sample time t. And when we multiply the numerator and denominator by t uh, by um, z, we get z minus 1 divided by z times t. So in that case, we can replace s by that expression. So let's see how it works out in an example. And in this example, we have a pi controller with k the proportional part, and this is my integrating part. And we're going to transform this controller to the z domain by using the backwards difference approximation. So we are going to substitute um, z minus 1 over zt instead of s over here. So when we substitute s, we get the discrete controller, which is equal to k times, and then we get the substitution of s over here at this part, z minus 1 over zt, plus 0 0.01 divided by the replacement of s, which was z minus 1 over zt. And we have um, nasty fraction and fractions in this um, representation, so it's good to get rid of these fractions by multiplying the numerator and denominator by zt. And then we get k times z minus 1 plus 0 0.01 times zt, which is of course uh, because 0 0.01 has to be multiplied by that zt, divided by z minus 1 over here. And now we can rearrange the numerator by taking all the parts with, with z together, and then we get 1 plus 0 0.01 times t times z minus 1 divided by z minus 1. And when you want to implement this controller, for instance in Simulink, then it's much more easier to get negative powers of z because z to the power of minus 1 represents a delay of one sample. So we divide um, numerator and denominator by z, and then we get k times 1 plus 0 0.01 times t, that expression, minus 1 over z, which is z to the power minus 1, and in the denominator we get z over z, which is 1, and 1 over z, which is z to the power minus 1. So again, this is the representation of my digital controller by using the backwards difference approximation in a way that we can implement it, for instance, in Simulink. That was a backwards difference approximation. Now let's look to the Tustin or bilinear transformation. That is based on the following approximation. Uh, remember that e to the power minus st was equal by definition to z to the power minus 1. That was the cause of the z transformation. So e to the power s times t was equal to z. So we can rearrange that and we can say s is 1 over t. 1 over t times the natural log of z. But that natural log um, of z can be rewritten by using a logarithmic series expansion in which the ln of z, so the natural logarithmic, uh, logarithm of z, is replaced by 2 times this complete expression. And for the Tustin transformation, we only take um, the first part of the series and then we get that s will be replaced by 2 over t times z minus 1 over z plus 1. 
So by using the testin or by linear transformation, we, we are going to replace S by this expression, 2 over T times Z minus 1 divided by Z plus 1. And when you want to um, implement the controller, for instance, in Simulink again, um, it's easy again to have negative powers in the Z representation and numerator and denominator. So we are going to divide the complete numerator and denominator by Z, which yields 2 over T times 1 minus z to the power minus 1 divided by 1 plus z to the power minus 1. So again, by using the test and or by linear transformation, we are going to replace s by 2 over t times z minus 1 divided by z plus 1 of this expression when you are going to implement it, for instance, in Simulink. Let's use the same example as we did before. So we're going to um, discretize the PI controller over here by using the Tustin transformation. So we're going to replace S by this expression and then we get D, the digital controller, is equal to the proportional gain K times 2 over T times Z minus 1 divided by Z plus 1 at this part for S plus 0 0.01, which is standing over here, divided by the complete transformation of S in the denominator. And then we are going to get rid of the fraction by multiplying the numerator and denominator by t times z plus 1, which leaves us with k times 2 times z minus 1, which is over here, plus 0 0.01 multiplied with that t times z plus 1, which is expressed over here. And in the denominator, we get 2 times z minus 1 coming from this expression. Now let's uh, rearrange um, the numerator again by taking all the parts with z together and then we get dz is equal to k times 2 times z, which is expressed over here, plus 0 0.01 times t times z, which is standing over here, plus the constants minus 2 and 0 0.001 times t, which is here in the numerator. And in the denominator we get 2 times z minus 2. And again, when you want to implement it, it's always easy to divide numerator and denominator, in this case, by Z, and then we get this expression. Well, that was the testing transformation. Now let's compare both methods. And when we do that, we can see that with respect to complexity, the backwards difference approximation is somewhat less complex than testing. That's our first um, remark we can make. On the other hand, with respect to um, Accuracy, when we are going to um, transform the complete left half plane from the S domain to the Z plane, we can see that when we use a backwards difference approximation, that it yields a circle within the unity circle in the Z domain. So again, the backwards difference approximation is a stable transformation because all the poles from the left half plane are within the unity circle, but not the complete unity circle is used. On the other hand, when you use testing, we can see that complete left half plane in the S domain is transferred to complete unity circle in the Z domain, um, which, uh, on which we can conclude that the testing transformation is somewhat more accurate than the backwards difference approximation. Well, that's all. Thank you for watching and I see you next time. Bye-bye.